We are just 73 days away from the 2024 general election. Good afternoon and welcome to Election Brief. We're live on DSV Channel 4 to 1. Go TV Channel 1 to 5 on all our social media platforms and around the world on myjournline.com. Election headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol Platinum Energy, Energizing Dreams, the Chattered Institute of Management Accountants and the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, also brought to you by German Ozone Medical Center, Alternative Therapy, Dental Wellness and Beauty, as well as Chop Box Technologies, a convenient service and Youth Bridge Foundation, bridging the gap for positive youth development. My name is Faustina Safo. Please stay for details. Thanks for choosing us. Now, a group of lecturers from the University of Ghana, including a distinguished climatologist and head of the department of the physics department at the University of Ghana, Professor Nana Ama Brown Klutze, took to the streets of Accra on Tuesday to campaign for the National Democratic Congress. The lecturers stepped out of their usual roles, distributing flyers and engaging with drivers and passengers at the Oponglo traffic light. In an interview with the media, Professor Nana Ama Brown Klutze emphasized the need for change and urged the public to support the NDC. Uh, this afternoon, this evening, all the lecturers Bring that, that sound to you shortly. We'll bring it back to you shortly. Um, let's stay on the NDC because they have made some concerns. They have some concerns they would like to put across. The opposition National Democratic Congress has condemned the arrest, alleged manhandling and remanding of protesters from Democracy Hub. The party demands an immediate halt to the prosecution of the demonstrators who were arrested for protesting against illegal mining crisis that has plagued the country. On your screens now is a copy of a statement from the NDC. I'll just read excerpts of that and then we'll run in a conversation here on the election brief. Now, it says the National Democratic Congress has noted with grave concern the decision by the Accra Circuit Court to remand 28 protesters of the Democracy Hub into police custody and 11 others into prison custody at the instance of the despot of, uh, well, we, we can put that word out, uh, President Kufado and the MPP government. Now, prior to this decision, officers of the Ghana Police Service had arrested and manhandled several protesters belonging to the group for staging a three-day demonstration against illegal mining menace which has totally devastated our environment under the watch of this, um, they say, failed Akufado-led government. These arrests involved brutalities meted out to innocent and harmed civilians by the police. Among those arrested were minors, the aged and four and a four-month-old pregnant woman who was merely taking pictures close to the scene of the demonstration. Another gentleman was returning from church and was equally arrested alongside a host of other innocent bystanders. As we speak, families and lawyers of several protesters continue to complain about the lack of access to their relatives and clients, some of whom have been denied basic necessities such as food and water. The NDC condemns in no uncertain terms the high-handedness of the Ghana Police Service and their, quote, evil collaborators in the, well, he mentions it again, despotic Akufado Baumia government. It is totally reprehensive um, for the police to subject civilian protesters who are merely expressing their anger against the vexed matter of illegal mining to such barbaric and inhumane treatment. Well, that's a statement from the NDC. Um, they go on to say that the decision by the Accra Circuit Court to remand the protesters for offenses that are classified as misdemeanors um, is wrong. They say that the right to protest is unavoidable and it's a fundamental human right. 
and must not be inhibited by such acts of high-handedness. Again, they mentioned by the police and the courts. Well, let's run the conversation here on election brief. Join me now is Julius Kwame Anthony. He's NDC spokesperson on youth development. Thank you for your time here on election brief. Well, the NDC has condemned the actions of the Ghana Police Service in handling the Democracy Hub protesters. But then I'm curious, what specific steps does the party plan to take to hold the police accountable for the alleged misconduct you say they have committed? Well, um, thank you very much for having me. The party has not, as of yet, indicated the next steps that it's going to take uh, in response to these actions. But our position is quite clear now that we are demanding that the Attorney General exercises his authority under Section 54 of Act 30 mm. you use to enter words. and only for Sequoia mm. and withdraw these frivolous charges against the people. And, and, and importantly, the record must reflect that as we speak today, the presidency has not taken any position whatsoever on the conduct of the police officers. The president himself is in New York as we speak at the UN General Assembly. I think that's about few, a few minutes from now he'll be delivering his keynote address over there. I don't know what the president is going to be telling the world. While back at home, police officers under his watch are brutalizing innocent Ghanaians. And what are they protesting mm -hmm. about? They mm -hmm. are protesting about a canker that is destroying this country. A situation which he himself has superintended over. A situation which his own ministers, Professor Prempon Boatin, in a report to him, mm. indicated to him that members of his government, people in the Jubilee House, are involved in doing. That is the reason why these brutalities are being meted out to people. And let people notice that they may make legal arguments about people, I mean, engaging in unlawful assembly and blah, blah, blah. Anybody who does a case we read, of section 202 of Act 29, that is the Criminal Offences Act, would realize that where the charge even legitimate, a charge of unlawful assembly is a misdemeanor. On what basis is any court refusing to grant bail to people because they have been charged of unlawful assembly? People who are demonstrated are criminals so much that granting them bail is a problem for the Republic of Ghana today when the real perpetrators of the offenses against this republic the Ghana Water Company today is unable to produce uh, supply water at its full capacity because of Galamse. There are verifiable reports which tells us that some of the effects of Galamse on our women is that it's causing barrenness, it's causing deformities of children and all of those things. Mm. These are Anthony, men. let me come in at this point because you use strong words in your statement signed by Sami Jemfi. Some words yes. I struggle to even pronounce them on air disgusting you describe the but conduct if, if of the police now beyond condemning the court's decision to remand the protesters how does the ndc intend to challenge the judiciary on what you perceive as unjust remand of some of these individuals well as, as i said there are there are lawful recourses that the perpetrators of these actions themselves can take the attorney general is the one supervising this prosecution it wouldn't happen without his authorization because there was a senior state attorney who was prosecuting the people. We are demanding that they exercise that authority. When they do not, then we may define our next steps to do so. It is not the case that when the, the ball is still within their court to exercise the authorities that has been granted to them by the people of Ghana, to exercise that, to, to, I mean, to, to demand a just environment for them. If they fail to exercise it, then we may determine the next step we will take. It is not up to us yet to do that. It's the Attorney General who now has the ball in, in his court. As we speak, Vice President Baumia is acting president of Ghana. He has the full executive authority of the powers of government, which have been vested in the president as we speak today, because President Kupuado is out of the country. The Attorney General is an appointee of the president, and it means that by extension, the Attorney General, as we speak now, works for Vice President Mahmoud Baumia. Vice President Mahmoud Baumia is the one with the ball in his court. So if you are asking what the NDC is going to do, the NDC is telling the governing New Patriotic Party to do the right thing. Vice President Baumia should direct the Attorney General to enter a nolle prosequi, or the, the state's attorney which is prosecuting the case, to enter a nolle prosequi and be done with this thing. When is it that in Ghana, when has it happened that people do not have a right anymore 
to demand that the right things to be done. The issue of Galamse is not something that is strange to us. We all know what it is that is happening. Mm. Let me come in at this point, months. Anthony. The NDC mentioned the involvement of minors and elderly, as well as a pregnant woman in the arrest in the statement that you put out. How do you plan to address the broader implications of police action against vulnerable groups during protests? Definitely, if police officers exceed the bounds of their authority, especially discretion which they are enjoined under the Constitution of the Republic, particularly Article 23, mm. to exercise reasonably and fairly, then they will be dealt with. What the police must know is that we are all in the same Ghana. If they serve as appendices of the governing party, instead of enforcing the laws which they are supposed to do, and they are supposed to know that law enforcement is a question of proportionality and reasonableness, if they exceed those principles that are supposed to guide them, they should know that if power changes hand, they will still be there. They will be prosecuted if they exit those bounds. That one, it should be clear to everybody. If you allow yourself to serve as an appendix of the governing party, to be used to suppress dissenting voices, you should know that there should be consequences for that. For that, the police should be aware of it. So when you go ahead and you're abusing pregnant women, elderly people, children, underage people have also been arrested by the police. Somebody was closing from church, and there are videos of it. How they were malhandling these people. Mm. Those police okay, officers should noted, be ready, Anthony, willing, and uh, able We would have to make progress to at this point. We'd have to make progress at this point. Um, and so we'd have to come in at this point because um, we're just being told one of the key things you've raised is that the president will be addressing the UN General Assembly today. Indeed, he has started addressing the Assembly. Let's see if he'll make any points with regards to illegal mining. And his failure to act in times of crisis raises a difficult question. What is the purpose of the Security Council if it cannot intervene when the world needs it most? Reforming the UN Security Council is a matter of fairness and necessity. The current structure created in 1945 no longer reflects the realities of today's geopolitical and economic landscape. Africa, Latin America, and South Asia remain underrepresented despite their significant influence on global affairs. This lack of representation undermines the legitimacy of the Council's decisions and the use of veto power by a few permanent members often paralyzes its ability to act effectively during crises. Reform is essential to ensure that the Council is more inclusive, democratic, and responsive to the complex challenges we face today. The world has changed and the Security Council must change with it to maintain its relevance in promoting global peace and security. For years, I've championed the need to reform the Security Council as per the Ezzouini Consensus, the common African position on UN reform, which calls for Africa to have permanent seats on the Council. It is incomprehensible that a continent of 1.4 billion people has no permanent voice in shaping decisions that affect global peace and security. The time for half measures is over. We need a Security Council that is fit for purpose in today's world. It is heartening, however, that finally, the demand for reform has found acceptance by leaders of two of the five permanent members, President Joe Biden of the United States of America and President Emmanuel Macron of France. Hopefully, the others will soon follow suit. We must also recognize that the fight for peace goes beyond government actions. It is a fight for humanity itself. In Africa, we have often borne the brunt of conflicts, sending our troops to peacekeeping missions with limited support from the global community. While I'm pleased to see the UN now taking steps to finance peacekeeping in Africa, an outcome of Ghana's presidency of the UN Security Council. We must go further. Peacekeeping alone is not enough. We must address the potential causes of conflict, poverty, inequality, and lack of opportunity. True peace comes from investing in education, health care, and economic development. However, peace cannot be imposed from the outside. It must be built from within. African nations must take ownership of their security, and the African Union needs to strengthen itself to be able to respond swiftly to, its, to threats. Madam President, as I speak today, 
ongoing developments in West Africa are deeply troubling. Military coups in Mali, Guinea, Burkina Faso, and Niger threaten the democratic process, progress we have worked so hard to achieve within the ECOMAS community. These coups are stark reminders that democracy is indeed fragile and must be continually nurtured. In Ghana, however, we will remain resolute in our commitment to democracy. As my presidency draws to a close, I want to assure this assembly that the upcoming 2024 elections in Ghana will be free, fair, and transparent. Ghanaians have demonstrated time and again in the last three decades their strong attachment to democracy, which they will not permit to be undermined. The Electoral Commission, supported by Ghana's security services, is well equipped to ensure that the will of the Ghanaian people is respected. Ghana has long been a, a beacon of democracy in Africa, and we intend to keep it that way. The 2024 elections will be proof of our enduring adherence to the rule of law, transparency, and the principles of democratic accountability that have guided our nation in recent decades. As President, we find, Madam President, we find ourselves at a pivotal moment in history. The decisions we make today will shape the future of our world. We can choose to act with courage, compassion, and a commitment to leave no one behind, or we can choose inaction and allow the suffering of millions and the degradation of the planet to continue. Let me end by reminding us all that the future is not something that simply happens. It is something we create. We have the power in this room to change the course of history. Let us not shy away from that responsibility. Let us act now and let us act together. I wish you God's blessings in all your current and future deliberations. And I thank you for your attention. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Ghana. The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Rumen Radev, President of the Republic of Bulgaria. I request protocol to escort His Excellency and invite him to address the Assembly. Well, President Akufade, um, Akufado there addressing the UN general meeting, he has pledged to ensure that the 2024 general election is free and fair. Now let's do some other stories here on election brief as we put the spotlight on other matters happening around the world. We will be telling you about a new petition by PPP. Now they are part of the parties um, that have been disqualified, the 11 political parties that have been disqualified from the EC, by the EC from the race for the elections and we would be engaging them shortly as we get to understand some of their key concerns because they have dragged the EC to court. Well, a group of lecturers from the University of Ghana, including a distinguished um, climatologist and head of the Department of Physics at the University of Ghana, Professor Nana Ama Brown Kutse, took the streets of Accra on Tuesday to campaign for the NDC. Let's listen to that report. We'll be back with more. Uh, this afternoon, this evening, all the lecturers on campus at the University of Ghana and UPSC and Gimpa lecturers have joined us on the street at a pay no traffic to make sure that the message of the NDC gets to the doors and the cars of the people of Ghana. So we have gathered here this evening doing campus, not really, traffic campaign, the street campaign. So we have a lot of lecturers who are ready in the traffic, talking to the drivers and passengers in the, on the road, at a point we at the moment here. Yeah. Well, there are two things. One is to get the message of His Excellency John Draman in Mahama to the people of Ghana, at least those who pass through uh, uh, Johnson here. And two, to encourage all other lecturers on all the campuses to also join the campaign. To tell us that way they can do it, if they can join the door to door, if they can join the street campaign, they should all come out in their numbers and campaign for John Zaman and Mahama. We need to bring NBC back to reset Ghana. There are so many things uh, that we can speak to in a manifesto from the NBC. 
luckily or fortunately, I was one of those who drafted the messages that went into the NDC manifesto. I focus on the science, technology, environment, and innovation, and again, sanitation as well. So the key policies of resetting the country for science and environment, I am happy with. The digital jobs, GM is bringing. The Galante site, GM want to reclaim of the lands. We want that, especially for the environment, to get back to its normal state. Uh, GM's policies to change the face of small scale mining in the country. We support it to make some proposals to that as well. There are so many options, especially for the youth and the people of the, of the country, we support those uh, policies. I believe at the point where Ghana is now, if we don't, if the right thinking Ghanaians don't jump on the campaign to change the narrative, I'm not sure Ghana will be better again. So we, the lecturers, have decided that we want a change. We want to change the NPP government to bring back NDC. So that the good works, especially this one JM did, can be recalled back. JM can come and continue with the development that we are, we are doing. And we believe that the change that we want in the country will come back to the country. Well, let's do some other stories here on election brief. The Progressive People's Party has filed a suit against the Electoral Commission challenging the removal of their candidate from the presidential race. The EC, after vetting the nomination forms of 24 presidential candidates, disqualified 11 of them for various discrepancies in their forms. But the PPP has dragged the EC to court, insisting they met all the EC criteria. Now, we've been joined in the studio by Remy Papakal. Um, he is the National Secretary for the Progressive People's Party. Thank you for your time here on the election you. brief. Well, Thank this you. is not the first time the PPP has gone to court. That's In right. 2016, you 2016, did the same. Yes, what are you seeking to achieve this time? Right. Thank you very much. Um, so, as you are all aware, on the, the Electoral Commission uh, declared nominations open to be filed between the 19th and the 13th of September. Mm. And uh, we duly complied and uh, submitted a nomination form for our flag bearer, Kofi Asamoah on the 13th, Friday the 13th of September. Um, Saturday, that was the next day, we got a letter from them indicating uh, certain pages that they required us to uh, make corrections to and then submit by 12 p.m. on Sunday, which we did. And then after five clear days from Monday to Friday, we never heard from them, only to find out here on social media that some people had been written to at 11 p.m. on Thursday. And uh, we later got a letter from them the next day indicating just a one line saying that uh, the team, the IT and technical teams found errors, which we didn't complete within the specified period. And that for us is quite unfortunate and not the reflection of the true facts, because uh, like I said, they, they failed, in any case, they failed to particularize, the letter that they sent to us just indicated pages where they are, but they failed to particularize the set pages, the set errors, the specific mm. type of errors. It was, it was, there was nothing to that effect. Mm. And so it was it's quite unfortunate. We find that to be, their decision, their conduct to fly against the rule of natural justice because uh, we have the right to be heard. And in any case, if when we submitted the forms, the corrected forms on Sunday the 15th, mm. what it told us was that we're going to hear from them, mm. that uh, there was going to be another IT stage, which a review stage. And that was what we were expecting. But within five day period, there was no communication absolutely from the EC. And so we felt that the only option is for us to go to court. And just as we did in 2016, when Dr. Papaku Sindu, who was then our flag bearer, was disqualified by Charlotte Osai. We made our case and the Supreme Court uh, uh, directed for him to be put back on the, on the ballot. Mm. And that is the same thing we are asking the court to declare that the conduct of the Electoral Commission to um, disqualify Kofi Asamoah without giving him uh, the opportunity, if there any, uh, to ad address the said errors that he had found was really unfair. And then also to, of course, reinstate him, put him on the ballot. Uh, for December 7th. So that's the a, EC the set up a vetting committee and right. for most of the political parties and their aspirants, they were um, reached out to when there were issues with their right. forms. Yes. Are you saying the EC never reached out to the PPP? Clarify for me. No, I said that they did the first time mm -hmm. after Friday. And some of the errors they actually mentioned. They, they wrote an official letter okay. and then specified certain pages where they had identified some errors. 
but they didn't indicate what they, those said errors were. Mm. We understand. And yes, uh, throughout the period from Friday to Sunday, we met other political parties who were also coming there to either pick up their letters or submit the corrected form. So it was something all of us engaged in. But like I said, we then made also corrected those errors on the pages that they indicated. But they didn't even really say that, okay, maybe page one, this is the, the exact nature of the error. It was just general that there are errors, so go and correct them. Mm. So that is what But I for think. other political parties, they made mention of the specific errors that they spotted in their forms. Are not, you saying that? It was the not the case. Yes, and okay. we have submitted this, their letter okay. as, as part of our, our affidavit, our evidence to the court. So that the letter never particularized the exact nature of the said errors. It just mentioned pages. Mm. Yes. And so moving forward, you are seeking that your candidates be asked to partake in the upcoming election. Yes. But doesn't this reveal a bigger problem about some of the issues in the party and how this has become a norm, mostly filing of forms, you should do this with a lot of um, scrutiny. Why are there errors each time in the people? Like I said, look, this, this is not an issue. It's, it's, mm. This is not an issue just with the Progressive Party. Uh, like I said, it was, if you, the issue will tell you that almost all of the political parties it wasn't just a PPP. You see, it's, it has to do also, we should rather be looking at the short time frame that the electoral commission gives to political parties. Mind you, uh, each booklet is about 143 pages, must be signed by two people across in to the 261 administrative districts of the country. So from the southern part of the country all the way to the northern part of it, it takes a bit of time mm. to, to, I mean, send these for around. around so as part of your petition, yeah. are you asking for more time in future for the filing of your forms? Well, that's, that's something to look at. It, it's something to look at later. But for now, mm -hmm. our contention is that the conduct of the Electoral Commission flies against the case of natural judge, given the, the, the facts of the matter as we have stated. Mm -hmm. So if indeed, after the first time, when they give the opportunity to correct the forms, if indeed, as you are saying, there were other errors uh, found later, mm -hmm. They didn't, in the, in the letter disqualifying our flag bearer, they did not indicate the said errors in any case. And they did not even admit that uh, whether even uh, we had complied with the first letter where they had found errors. They, it, they were just silent only. It was just a one-liner generalizing the issue. And this is what we're asking the court to uh, strike us as unfair and then reinstate Kofi Asama on the ballot. Thank you for your time here on Thank Election so Brief. And that's how we wrap up the conversation. The PPP dragging the EC to court. For more news, please log on to myjournline.com. My name is Faustina Safa. Good afternoon.